Joker number is that point where the darkness gives birth to light, basically. That's my definition of it. That out of the darkness, out of the depths, out of that space, out of that abyss, the number has been able to illuminate and illustrate the ever changing complexity and beauty of the African American experience. In 1977, Lou Bellamy established the Penumbra Theater Company in St. Paul, Minnesota, with a mission to give African-American narratives, which had been largely ignored, a space to be shared. The success of the company broke a barrier of prejudice and discrimination by challenging the exclusion of African-American experiences in the mainstream theater community. Bellamy created Penumbra Theater to provide a space where Black playwrights and actors could show their work and tell their story. Today, Penumbra continues to inspire other African-American theater communities across the country to break barriers in order to tell the Black narrative, an integral part of American culture. Before 1910, African-American representation in theater was widely restricted to minstrel shows. These shows began in 1828 and featured white Americans with Black painted faces depicting stereotypical African-American caricatures. By the late 1840s, minstrel shows were a highly demanded form of entertainment across America. These shows created tropes, with a few examples being the depiction of African Americans as the happy pets of white Americans, as demons who could only be tamed by white men, or as laughable clowns. At the end of the American Civil War, minstrel shows offered an opportunity for African Americans to enter into the American show business for the first time by acting out these wildly stereotypical caricatures. By the end of the century, minstrel shows began to lose popularity. I think he didn't like the way I said all this. Them cops think we should still be in a field somewhere. Knocked the hat off my head, and it was on, I guess. The Great Migration describes the mass movement of African Americans from the South to the North. This movement was incentivized by fear of lynchings and hate groups in the South, and promising new factory jobs in the North. With the Great Migration came predominantly African American neighborhoods such as Harlem and New York City. Growing consciousness of Northern segregation led to the creation of new cultural artistic expressions characterized by an emphasis on the Black voice and the African American desire for self-determination. This movement later became known as the Harlem Renaissance and spread throughout the country. One piece of art produced during this time was three plays for a Negro theater written by Wrigley Torrens. These one acts depicted African Americans as people who yearned to break the barrier of black stereotypes created by the minstrel show. The movement ended with the Great Depression, but later found a resurgence in the civil rights movement. The Black Arts Movement emerged as the artistic side to the Civil Rights Movement and was led by politically motivated Black artists who broke barriers of discrimination with their art to create pride in Black identity and culture. The movement included artists such as poet Amiri Baraka, who in his poem Black Art describes the need for African American voices in general American media. Another piece of art created by Baraka is his 1965 essay, The Revolutionary Theater. In his essay, Baraka discussed the need for change through literature and theater. The revolutionary theater must take dreams and give them a reality. It must isolate the ritual and historical cycles of reality. But it must be food for all those who need food and daring propaganda for the beauty of the human mind. In 1963, the Guthrie Theater established the Twin Cities as an important center for theater However, it didn't provide many opportunities for artists of color and did not produce plays depicting black experiences, with only one African-American written production having been performed between the Guthrie's founding and the founding of Penumbra Theater. In 1976, the federal government provided the Hallie Q. Brown Center, a community center for African-American city residents, with $150,000 for cultural arts programming as a part of the Comprehensive Employment and Training Act, or CETA. 
A part of the money was used to establish a theater directed by University of Minnesota professor Lou Bellamy. We were put together largely because we were unhappy with depictions of African Americans in the newspaper, on stage, in movies, and so forth. And we knew, by virtue of being African American, that there was more to the story than was being told. In November of 1977, the theater performed Eden, written by black playwright Steve Carter, as its first play as a publicized theater company with the intent to promote discussion about American society with regard to race. With the company established, Bellamy named the theater Penumbra, a Latin term meaning partial shadow, to symbolize the breaking of a barrier against accurate African-American narratives in theater, stories that were hidden in the shadow of American culture. Through Eden, Penumbra caught the attention of Minneapolis Star and Tribune theater critic Peter Boggan, who covered most of Penumbra's plays, giving the theater a type of news coverage historically less available to black theaters. Eden also attracted poet August Wilson, who came to St. Paul with a friend in order to help launch Penumbra. Wilson became increasingly interested in theater and collaborated with Penumbra to produce his first professional plays. In 1984, Penumbra premiered August Wilson's first majorly successful play, Jitney, this production broke barriers by discussing the American experience from an African-American perspective. As a result, Jitney and other Wilson plays were given an audience across the country, including on several Broadway stages. Two of Wilson's plays received Pulitzer Prizes, the highest playwright honor, cementing him as an important American playwright. The success of Wilson's plays helped Penumbra by filling seats and creating interest in other Penumbra-produced plays by virtue of having them performed on the same stage that produced August Wilson. There was an assumption that once Penumbra's initial funding ran out, the theater would go out of business because it was a small black theater. However, Penumbra stayed alive, showing that African-American narratives had a market in the theater business. The more and more Penumbra has done what it's done for over 40 years, more and more theaters are realizing that African-American theater is a viable money-making asset to any theater. During the late 1900s, larger theaters began producing more plays written by African-American playwrights and other playwrights of color. Because these theaters had a larger base of support, they were able to attract more people to a show by a black playwright than a small black theater might have been able to leading to the closing of many small cultural theaters. During this time, many Penumbra alums left to perform or direct with more financially successful companies, such as the Guthrie or various Broadway theaters. I went to Broadway with August Wilson's Radio Golf and Mary McClinton. Through August Wilson's Jitney, brought the Penumbra acting aesthetic to New York. This scattering of Penumbra alums spread the mission of Penumbra across the country. Today, the barrier of prejudice and discrimination in American theater against African American narratives continues to be broken down piece by piece. Penumbra paved the way for non-white theaters in Minnesota, such as Pangea World Theater and Theater Moo, to provide a space where the American story with all its different cultures could be produced and given an audience. While theaters depicting black experiences are now more widespread, the barrier of prejudice against African-American theater still stands. While black actors and directors receive Academy Awards, they are generally still living in the shadow of their white co-stars. Because of the continuity of this barrier of prejudice and how it has changed to use softer language to belie its discrimination, theaters such as Penumbra who are dedicated to showing the African-American experience, continue to break the barrier and let African-American narratives step out of the shadow and into the light. We can reach across cultures. We can reach across languages, all sorts of barriers. I've got you looking up here intellectually processing something, and then you sneak up and go, ah, gotcha, that's you being human. That's, that's what we live for, pray for. 
that that human experience.